Metabolic syndrome is a group of conditions that together raise your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include excess fat around the waist, high blood pressure, high blood triglycerides, low HDL cholesterol, and high blood sugar. If you have at least three of these, you might have metabolic syndrome. How does the latest research impact the understanding and management of metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome happens when your body has trouble using insulin, which helps control blood sugar. This problem often comes with inflammation, where your body feels like it's always fighting off an infection. The main issue isn't just being overweight, but having too much fat around your belly. This belly fat makes it harder for your body to use insulin and causes more inflammation. Doctors now say measuring the size of your waist compared to your height is better than just measuring your waist alone to check for metabolic syndrome. This condition has become more common since the 1980s, affecting about one-third of adults in America, with men having it a bit more often than women. Is excess calorie intake the only cause of metabolic syndrome? While eating too many calories can lead to metabolic syndrome, it's not the only cause. Metabolic syndrome is more complex, with multiple factors playing a role. Apart from excess calories, a sedentary lifestyle can lead to weight gain and insulin resistance. Genetics also matter, as some people are more likely to develop it due to their family history. Hormonal imbalances, such as those caused by PCOS or thyroid issues, contribute too. Chronic stress and poor sleep can disrupt hormones and metabolism. Lastly, aging and environmental toxins also play a role. So tackling metabolic syndrome requires addressing all these factors, not just diet. What role does waist circumference play in diagnosing metabolic syndrome? Waist circumference is key in diagnosing metabolic syndrome. It's a crucial measure for assessing central obesity, a major factor in metabolic syndrome. The International Diabetes Federation requires an elevated waist circumference for diagnosing the syndrome. Specific cutoffs vary by ethnicity, such as 94 centimeters for Europid men and 90 centimeters for South Asian men. Despite its importance, it's rarely measured in practice, with less than one in five middle-aged patients having it recorded. Measuring waist circumference is simple, yet both clinicians and patients often avoid it. Alternatives like the waist-to-height ratio may help improve diagnosis. What blood pressure levels indicate metabolic syndrome? If your blood pressure is 130 over 80 or higher, it can mean you have metabolic syndrome. This includes having a top number called systolic pressure of 130 or more, and a bottom number called diastolic pressure of 80 or more. High blood pressure is one of the main signs of metabolic syndrome, along with other things like belly fat, high triglycerides, low good cholesterol, and high blood sugar. Normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. Elevated blood pressure is between 120 and 129 over 80. If it's 130 over 80 or higher, it's considered high blood pressure. Is your fasting blood glucose level putting you at risk for metabolic syndrome? If your fasting blood glucose level is 100 milligrams per deciliter or higher, it could be a sign of metabolic syndrome. This condition occurs when your body has trouble managing blood sugar levels, which can lead to prediabetes or diabetes. Metabolic syndrome is diagnosed when you have three or more risk factors, and an elevated fasting glucose is one of them. Keeping an eye on your blood sugar levels and maintaining a healthy lifestyle can help manage or prevent metabolic syndrome. How do high triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol contribute to metabolic syndrome? High triglycerides, defined as 150 mg per deciliter or higher before treatment, and low HDL cholesterol, with levels below 40 mg per deciliter for men and below 50 mg per deciliter for women, are key factors in diagnosing metabolic syndrome. Elevated triglycerides indicate that your body isn't handling fat properly, which can lead to other health issues like heart disease. HDL cholesterol is often called good cholesterol because it helps remove other forms of cholesterol from your bloodstream. Low HDL levels mean your body is less efficient at this, leading to a higher risk for heart disease. To have metabolic syndrome, you need at least three out of five risk factors, high triglycerides, abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, high fasting blood glucose, and low HDL cholesterol. This combination of risk factors increases the likelihood of cardiovascular problems and insulin resistance. 
Regular checkups can help catch these issues early and manage your health better, highlighting the importance of maintaining both healthy triglyceride and HDL cholesterol levels. What are the key risk factors for developing metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome is a group of conditions that raise the risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. One major risk factor is having excess fat around your waist. For women, a waist size over 35 inches, and for men, over 40 inches, is risky. Not being active enough also increases your chances. As you age, the risk goes up too because people often become less active and gain weight around the abdomen. Your ethnicity, family history, and certain health conditions like diabetes and sleep apnea can also contribute. To lower your risk, maintain a healthy weight, stay active, eat well, manage stress, and avoid smoking and heavy drinking. Why is metabolic syndrome more common in some ethnic groups? Metabolic syndrome, or MEDAS, doesn't affect everyone equally. Research shows that South Asians, like Hindustanis, have the highest risk, with a prevalence of 52.7%. In the USA, Mexican Americans and Hispanics also face higher rates of MEDAS. Interestingly, Chinese individuals have lower MEDAS rates compared to non-Hispanic whites and blacks. African Americans generally have lower MEDAS rates than whites and Hispanics. Native Americans are at the highest risk for type 2 diabetes, a part of MEDAS. These differences are due to factors like genetics, obesity, and lifestyle. Addressing these disparities means creating tailored strategies that respect cultural contexts. Is metabolic syndrome putting you at risk of blood clots? Metabolic syndrome can increase your risk of forming blood clots, especially in your heart and brain. This happens because obesity and excess belly fat can damage blood vessel linings, leading to clots. Diabetes, often part of metabolic syndrome, causes plaque buildup in arteries, making clots more likely. Plus, there's a 17% higher chance of clot recurrence in people with deep vein thrombosis. To reduce these risks, it's crucial to manage metabolic syndrome with a healthy diet, regular exercise, and weight control. Sometimes medication might be needed for issues like high blood pressure or cholesterol. Stay proactive about your health. How can you manage metabolic syndrome to reduce cardiovascular risk? Well, start by aiming to lose 7 to 10% of your body weight over 6 to 12 months. This can help reduce insulin resistance, lower blood pressure, and improve cholesterol levels. Regular exercise is crucial, so aim for 150 to 250 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise per week. Combining this with strength training is even better. Adopting a healthy diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins is also key. Consider following the DASH or Mediterranean diet, which focus on reducing saturated fat, trans fat, and salt intake, while increasing unsaturated fatty acids. Quitting smoking is strongly recommended, as it can worsen many health complications associated with metabolic syndrome. Limit alcohol intake to no more than four drinks per day for men and two drinks for women. Avoid prolonged periods of inactivity and incorporate more movement throughout your day. By making these lifestyle changes, you can significantly lower your risk of diabetes, heart disease, and other cardiovascular issues. Is there a one-size-fits-all treatment for metabolic syndrome? To manage metabolic syndrome, we need to target each specific issue. For high blood pressure, doctors might prescribe ACE inhibitors or beta blockers. High cholesterol is tackled with statins like atorvastatin, High blood sugar is managed with medications like metformin. To reduce heart risks, low-dose aspirin might be used. Sometimes weight loss meds are added if needed. Remember, lifestyle changes like a healthy diet and regular exercise are key. The main goal is to lower heart disease risks and prevent type 2 diabetes. How does central obesity contribute to metabolic syndrome? Central obesity, or having excess fat around the abdomen, plays a key role in metabolic syndrome. This type of fat leads to the dysfunction of fat cells, causing them to release more free fatty acids and inflammatory substances. These changes result in insulin resistance, making it harder for the body to use glucose effectively. Insulin resistance then triggers a chain reaction, worsening other conditions like high blood pressure and abnormal cholesterol levels. All these interconnected issues create a vicious cycle, increasing the risk of developing serious health problems like type 2 diabetes and heart disease. What is insulin resistance and how does it relate to metabolic syndrome? 
Insulin resistance is a condition where your cells don't respond well to insulin, making it hard to control blood sugar. This resistance leads to higher insulin production to maintain normal blood sugar levels. Most people with metabolic syndrome experience some level of insulin resistance. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions that increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include high blood pressure, high blood sugar, extra fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol levels. Factors such as obesity, especially around the abdomen, physical inactivity, aging, and genetics contribute to insulin resistance. By understanding how insulin resistance impacts your body, you can take steps to improve your health, such as exercising regularly, eating a balanced diet, and maintaining a healthy weight. Improving insulin sensitivity through exercise and weight loss can help manage and reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome. How do insulin resistance and leptin resistance interact in metabolic syndrome? Leptin is a hormone that helps control your appetite. It sends signals to your brain to tell you when you're full, so you stop eating. Think of it as your body's way of saying, hey, I'm full now, I don't need more food. When someone has insulin resistance, their body doesn't respond well to insulin, a hormone that helps control blood sugar levels. In people who are very overweight, insulin resistance often comes with leptin resistance, this means the body stops listening to leptin signals to stop eating, even though there is a lot of leptin around. This condition is called hyperleptinemia. When insulin resistance and leptin resistance happen together, they mess up the body's energy balance and metabolism. High levels of leptin can make insulin resistance worse by causing inflammation. This connection is especially strong in people with severe obesity and can be different for boys and girls. Understanding how these resistances interact is very important for managing metabolic syndrome, a group of conditions that increase the risk of heart disease and diabetes. How does chronic stress contribute to metabolic syndrome? Chronic stress can really mess with your body. It triggers systems in your brain that disrupt how your body handles energy. This stress can cause issues like insulin resistance, making it hard for your body to use sugar properly. It can also lead to high blood pressure and increase bad cholesterol levels. Stress makes your body produce more cortisol, which raises blood sugar and makes you crave unhealthy foods. Plus, it can cause fat to build up around your organs. Managing stress is super important to keep these problems in check and help prevent metabolic syndrome. How does fructose affect metabolic syndrome? Eating too much fructose can be bad for your health and might lead to something called metabolic syndrome. This happens when several health problems occur together, like high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and abnormal cholesterol levels. Here's how fructose can cause these issues. First, fructose boosts fat production. It can make your liver produce more fat, raising the level of triglycerides in your blood. This can lead to a condition called dyslipidemia, which is part of metabolic syndrome. Second, fructose can cause insulin resistance. Eating a lot of fructose can make your body less sensitive to insulin, a hormone that helps control blood sugar levels. This can lead to insulin resistance, which is a step toward type 2 diabetes. Third, fructose can contribute to weight gain. It doesn't make you feel full, so you might eat more and gain weight. It also increases the amount of fat around your organs, known as visceral fat. Fourth, fructose can lead to high blood pressure. High fructose intake can increase your blood pressure by raising uric acid levels in your body. Lastly, fructose can cause liver problems. It can lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is when fat builds up in your liver and causes damage. To keep your metabolism healthy and avoid these problems, it's important to limit the amount of added sugars like fructose in your diet. What role does diet play in managing metabolic syndrome in children and adolescents? Managing metabolic syndrome in kids isn't just about cutting calories. It's about eating the right kinds of foods. Studies show that a diet high in complex, unrefined carbohydrates and fiber is essential. Kids should eat plenty of whole grains, fruits, and vegetables while avoiding added sugars and high-fat foods. It's also important to reduce sodium intake, especially for those who are overweight. Combining a healthy diet with high-intensity aerobic exercise can significantly improve insulin sensitivity and reduce belly fat. This helps manage other symptoms like high blood pressure and abnormal cholesterol levels. How can you manage metabolic syndrome? Managing metabolic syndrome starts with reducing your risk of heart disease and diabetes. Focus on lowering individual risk factors like abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, and bad cholesterol levels. 
Adopting a heart-healthy diet, such as the Mediterranean or DASH diet, is key. Increase your physical activity to at least 30 minutes a day, aim to lose about 7% of your body weight, and quit smoking. Limiting alcohol and managing stress are also important. In some cases, medications might be needed to control blood pressure, cholesterol, or blood sugar levels. Regular checkups with your healthcare provider will help track your progress and adjust your treatment plan as needed. How can you improve your diet for better health? To improve your diet and combat metabolic syndrome, start by cutting back on added sugars. Try to keep your sugar intake to less than 25 grams a day. This means drinking fewer sugary drinks and eating fewer sugary snacks and candies. Instead of drinking fruit juice, eat whole fruits because they have more fiber and nutrients. Choose unsweetened foods whenever you can. Focus on eating more plants like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. Include healthy fats found in nuts, seeds, and fish to help boost good cholesterol. Remember to eat the right portion sizes and drink plenty of water. Following diets like the Mediterranean or DASH can be helpful. Make small, gradual changes to your diet instead of trying to change everything at once. How can lifestyle changes help manage metabolic syndrome? Making changes to your lifestyle can also help manage metabolic syndrome. Start by eating a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats, like the Mediterranean diet. Eat smaller portions and avoid high-calorie foods to help lose weight. Try to exercise for at least 30 minutes every day with activities like walking or jogging. Even losing a small amount of weight can make a big difference. You might need medicine to help with specific problems like high blood pressure or cholesterol. It's important to keep track of your waist size, blood pressure, and blood sugar levels to see how you're doing. Regular checkups with your doctor are important to make sure your plan is working and to make any necessary changes.